mighty, He's the mighty, Allah my Lord, Allah my Lord. His word Quran, His word Quran, Muhammad Prophet, praise be upon, praise be upon, I'm a Muslim for all of time. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the especially merciful We praise Allah Azza wa Jal for He is deserving of all praise and recognition We invoke the peace and the blessings of Allah upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family, his companions and all those who follow in their path until Allah inherits this earth and everything on it I'd like to welcome you again to a new episode of Islamic Concepts. And we uh, agreed that we would take a common Islamic concept every episode and explain it or discuss it uh, into a uh, into an, uh, simpler understanding and, and maybe know some of the details behind this concept. And uh, today we'll uh, touch upon uh, what's known as Maqasidul Ibadah. Maqasidul Ibadah. The uh, themes of Ibadah or the purpose and some of the reasons behind worship. Now, if you remember, if you've been following these episodes, we've uh, uh, taken the concept of Ibadah earlier and we've covered the understanding of Ibadah and the concept of Ibadah. And within the concept of ibadah, one has to know that ibadah, worship generally, with all of its uh, uh, different forms and, and, and ideas and concepts that relate to worshiping Allah, which we mentioned is, a, is a, an entire way of life uh, and is the purpose of life. Allah tells us in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created the jinn, the spirits, and mankind save for the only purpose to worship ibadah, to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And we pinpointed that ibadah here specifically really means tawheed, yuwahidun, as many of the commentators of the Quran have specified. However, the comprehensive meaning of ibadah is also uh, meant uh, in this ayah uh, now to understand the purpose or the, let's say, more of the themes of ibadah. Uh, within uh, ibadah itself, there are three pillars that need to be applied. The love, we worship Allah because we, wo we love Him. Uh, we worship Allah because we hope that Allah will include us in His mercy and His rewards and the promises that He has promised uh, to his uh, 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 servants and those who are obedient to him and his messengers. Uh, and number three, we fear Allah. We fear that we would uh, fall into shortcomings, mistakes, sins, and that we will be held accountable for these shortcomings and that we ask Allah to forgive us these shortcomings. So, th so three pillars really have to be applied in the concept of ibadah. Uh, and these three pillars are the love for Allah, the hope that we hope Allah will include us and hope that Allah will accept from us uh, and the fear that we fear the punishments and the warnings of Allah. Now this generally, uh, when you apply this, amongst the reasons or the themes of ibadah, remember we are talking today about the uh, maqasid of ibadah, the themes or the purposes behind uh, ibadah generally, well, the pr main purpose here is to uh, uh, rise in the love that we have for Allah. The more one worships Allah, the more one expresses their love for Allah. The more one worships Allah, they express the hope that they have that Allah will accept from them these acts of worship in the comprehensive meaning or understanding of ibadah, worship. And the more one worships Allah, again, one would express that they fear the punishment of Allah, that they fear the the, the lacking that they uh, have towards uh, worshiping Allah. So uh, this is really one of the main uh, themes of ibadah, to rise in these, uh, in these acts of worship of the heart. And all of this combined, really, uh, the main purpose, remember the ayah, is to fulfill the purpose of our lives, the, the, the purpose of our existence, uh, to be uh, within that uh, that uh, perfect, harmonious 
uh, realm of all submitting to the will of Allah. Remember we said submission has uh, two types. There's the forceful submission. All creation submits to the universal laws of Allah, which is known as uh, uh, the Qadar uh, al-Kawni, uh, uh, the universal uh, uh, laws and, and, and predestined uh, creeds and matters of Allah Azza wa Jal. Then there's the other type of submission, which is the willful, by choice. And this is where the Muslim is distinguished from all other creation and all other human beings. Uh, all other creation are submitters uh, uh, forcefully. They have to submit to the laws of Allah, the universal laws of Allah. However, the believer submits willfully. Of course, the, the, the first type of submission, we all submit. It's shared by humans, by animals, by the, the, the universe, the, the planets. Everything that exists really submits to these laws, the universal laws of Allah. But the believer submits willfully to the legislative laws of Allah. This is revelation. This is when Allah commands us to pray, we pray. This is when Allah commands us to give zakah, we give zakah. This is where Allah commands us to follow the messenger, we follow the messenger. And so on and so forth. This is by choice. We do this by choice. And this is where the deciphering point of one who will be rewarded and given salvation and one who will be uh, blameworthy and uh, will be in a state of damnation. Billah. May Allah protect us and, and all those who we love from that uh, evil path. Uh, however, amongst the uh, more specific maqasid of ibadah, the general ibadah, remember we said to recognize Allah in his fullest oneness, uh, the general uh, themes of ibadah is to recognize Allah in fulfilling our purpose in life, to know that none uh, is worthy of our worship and recognition, adoration, love, hope, uh, uh, fear in the sense of it being an act of worship except Allah. This is Tawheed in the understanding of Tawheed of ibadah, Tawheed of worship, monotheism of worshiping none other than Allah. And then of course we uh, can find more specific themes for specific ibadat, specific uh, purposes, reasons, uh, results that would uh, come out of specific forms of acts of worship. Like, for example, the act of salah. Allah tells us in the Quran that salah has a purpose and it has a theme behind it that should be fulfilled and should be a result, a fruit of this ibadah, if you will. Allah says in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الصلاة تنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر Indeed, Salah denies uh, a person uh, from falling into الفحشاء uh, extreme disobediences, sometimes maybe publicly done. And munkar is anything that is, uh, that is wrongdoing. Anything that's wrongdoing, uh, Salah should be a denier in the, in the believer's heart to uh, uh, deny them in falling into these matters. And it doesn't mean the perfection of a person's attitude and, and, and way of life that they wouldn't fall into sin. We're all, uh, we're all in that realm of being, uh, being weak sometimes. But this is the purpose, this is the theme of salah. It, it serves that purpose to rise, or to raise, sorry, the, the, the uh, consciousness of a believer in repelling these acts of wrongdoings. This is part of the theme of salah, hence the meaning of maqasidul ibadah, a specific theme for salah. Then Allah further in this ayah says, wala dhikrullahi akbar. And after the, the uh, denying of, of wrongdoing and, 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 and evil acts, Allah tells us, wala dhikrullahi akbar. Then there is a greater purpose even behind salah. There's a greater theme in salah too. Akbar, and the remembrance of Allah is, uh, is greater. So here Allah is telling us that, keep in mind that salah is really to remember Allah, to be in uh, proper connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. Now knowing this purpose, this theme of ibadah, let's, uh, let's really put, our, put ourselves in that, in that balance and, and let's weigh ourselves. Are we really benefiting from salah? To this extent, is the theme of Salah being fulfilled here? Or are we falling into one of the gravest mistakes that many Muslims today are falling into? That is to perform these acts of worship physically, but to avoid it from the actual themes that will benefit the heart 
And the heart is the essence. Remember, Allah says, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ That uh, uh, on that day, no wealth, uh, no uh, offsprings, nothing will benefit the individual, the believer, except the one or the person or the believer who will come on that day, rise in the day of resurrection with that sound heart. And the soundness of heart is to fulfill these, these themes of this ibadah, salah to fulfill the purpose, the, the, the theme and the, the, the results that are sought after when performing salah. Uh, we, have to, we have to really put this in, into perspective. Again, one of the acts of worship is zakat. Zakat is almsgiving or charity, but there is the mandatory form of charity, the, the uh, accumulation of wealth over uh, a year's time or when it's considered to be crops, uh, when the crops give its, uh, is reaped. This is, again, a financial form of ibadah. Remember, we spoke about the two types, the physical and the financial. But it's not dry without any purpose. Zakat, the word zakat really means to purify. So you should have that intention to purify your wealth when giving zakat. And it purifies oneself also when doing so. And this purification falls under the concept of the themes of zakat. A further themes of zakat is to fulfill the need of others who are less fortunate, who uh, are not uh, as, uh, as, as fortunate as we are when we have uh, uh, this wealth that's accumulated over a year. For example, Saum, the act of fasting. What's the theme behind fasting? The theme, the main theme behind fasting is mentioned in the ayah. Ya ladina amanu, O you who believe, kutiba alaykum siyam Fasting has been prescribed upon you as it has been prescribed upon the people prior to you. What is the theme? What is the purpose? What is the end result that we should reap from this act of fasting? Hopefully that you may gain piousness. Right? And this piousness is, is the, the purpose uh, of the guidance in the Quran. Allah says, Hudan lil muttaqin. This Quran is a guidance for those who are pious, those who uh, 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 express piety. So really, when we fast, it should be a training course, if you will, uh, a period of time during the month of Ramadan that raises us into this theme and this purpose to establish taqwa. And it gets us ready for the next even act of worship, the life journey to hajj, pilgrimage. Allah says in that, uh, in that concept of hajj, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ taqwa." and seek further provision, more provision. And what type of provision are we to seek? Of course, we're supposed to have the financial means to journey to Hajj and to make that journey of, of the lifetime. But really, Allah tells us, وَخَيْرُ الزَّادِ taqwa. And the best of the provision that you can really provide yourself with is taqwa. This is the theme behind it. This is the purpose of the ibadah, to uh, raise that uh, piousness in your heart. And that's the act that you should reap as a result of these different forms of ibadat or these different forms of worships. And uh, I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to benefit us uh, from what has been said, benefit me, benefit you, and to uh, uh, give us awareness uh, to perform these mandatory acts of ibadah and further go into the voluntary acts of ibadah and to reap the benefit uh, the spiritual benefit and the themes behind these ibadat so that we would rise in uh, the uh, uh, pleasures of Allah Azza wa Jal and in the acceptance of Allah Azza wa Jal. I ask Allah to accept from us. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al anbiya wal mursaleen. Nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am a Muslim, I am a Muslim, Islam, I am a Muslim, Allah my Lord.